السلام عليكم سيدي وعليكم السلام سيدي my question regarding the fun my question regarding the fun estate what is important of surah al falak and hazrat bilal alayhi salam what is what what is important of surah al falak and hazrat bilal hazrat bilal <laughs> And Surah Al Falaq. Surah Al Falaq. Did we have an article on, on Sayyidina, Sayyidina Bilal al Habashi mm. salam, <coughs> and Ahad? That the reality, the reality, you can't say the reality, a reality of Surah Al Falaq. Is a ocean of fana and the owners of the falaq are all black, all dressed in black. Means that when we see them in that state of hayba, that their turban, the khirka, everything is in a state of black color. That shows that black is a color in which absorbs every color. So when we understand colors which I understand very little about, the color you see is that which was not absorbed. So when you see this color gold, every other color was went in and what came back out to you in your eyes is gold. Black represents everything came into it. Nothing came back out. It's symbolic of fana. It's symbolic of that it came to that and was completely extinguished. So it has a tremendous importance and the color black is a color of submission and the aqfa. So I don't know if only Surah Falaq but black has to do with the aqfa and the reality of aqfa reality in our everyday life is our shadow. <clears throat> is sir As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh This is Shaykh Narjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The people of black color, they carry the reality of servanthood upon this earth and that's why people are very bad with them. They were abused as a sign of how people of dunya and earth don't respect a reality from heaven and from paradise. Because of that, that the hardship they endure, the difficulty they endure, endured and endure in everyday life because it represents a reality from paradise. And Allah attached to every human being that symbol. So when we walk, what do you see? you see your shadow and your shadow is always black representing your aqfa reality. And your shadow is in sujood, is completely the, the way of complete submission. Even in your regular Islamic sujood you still have your body up. This sujood in which you're completely on the ground that not your waist None of your body is high, 
you're asking to be like a, a farsh, like a carpet on the floor that let Prophet to walk on you, that I'm nothing, I'm completely nothing. Allah gave that symbol that, look, your shadow. Why Allah attached a shadow to everyone? So that in the height of their world and in the, the beauty of the sun they're standing <coughs> they need a reminder that in the height of your standing and arrogance look to your shadow and how it's in complete submission to me and that it was attached as a reminder to us that submit yourself, efface yourself, put yourself to be nothing in the presence of Allah And that if you run towards the sun, you run towards dunya, your shadow is having to chase you. But if you run the other direction, you're chasing your shadow. <coughs> it means you're chasing your reality instead of your reality continuously chasing towards you. And I believe Prophet gave an example where he stood with the, the sun behind and the companions, you say, walk towards me. So, as you're walking to me, your shadow is chasing you. Means walk towards that reality, what could be the reverse way. But the importance was that is your shadow chasing you as a reminder, or are you chasing your shadow, means chasing your akhfa reality, in which to remind ourselves of our sujood, remind ourselves of our taslim, and remind ourselves in the end we all die. All this running, all this game, all these things, we should focus on that as well as what is eternal, what will benefit us in this state of death when we enter into the ground. So it means then life was to run after that reality and that that reality be a constant reminder for us of that we are going to die and that we have to take a state of submission and the reality of submission inshaAllah. And those whom running after the dunya. The shadow has to keep running after them to remind them that, where are you going, where are you going? So it has a deep reality. But Sayyidina Bilal al-Habashi has an immense, immense reality for the ishq and the love of Sayyidina Muhammad And I've given those talks about the reality that if you think that they suffered for Allah alhamdulillah but the reality is they suffered for their love and ishq of Sayyidina Muhammad that they were willing to be tortured and the immensity of how Sayyidina Bilal al-Habashi got tortured and that he would not, not come against Prophet And they told him, they told them, you worship Allah all you want because we don't care, we don't see it, you do whatever you want. But do not follow Muhammadun Rasulullah because that's where our problem is, we don't want you and all these people following Muhammadun Rasulullah said, no matter what you do to me I will never leave that reality. And he represented a whole crushing and being tormented and tortured for the love of Muhammadun Rasulullah But then he reminded that in the process of that torturing because of his love for Muhammadun Rasulullah and what Allah opened? Ah, ah. He opened Allah in the state of his difficulty for the love of Sayyidina Muhammad <coughs> He opened for him the state of Ahad, Abdul Ahad. He opened the oceans of ahadith in which all he could see and feel and, and whatever tajalli Allah was bringing upon his reality was in a state of ahad. That pure ikhlas, pure immense oceans of reality and that, that zikr was just ahad, ahad. 
And that was not for struggling in anything other than his ishq and love for Sayyidina Muhammad And on, on such a state of that reality that Prophet as soon as he attained that state sent Sayyidina Abu Bakr as-Siddiq and this has to do with an immense secret of Naqshbandiyyat al-Aliyya because we are under the grandchildren of Sayyidina Abu Bakr as-Siddiq as sent Sayyidina Abu Bakr as-Siddiq that freed this servant of Allah and used his wealth to purchase the freedom and take him out of that. But spiritually the immensity of that secret and the station that Sayyidina Bilal al-Abashi is carrying was a grant and a gift to be dressed within Naqshbandiyyat al-Aliyya. Nothing happened on this earth that did not have an eternal importance. And when you see that the, the grandfather of the tariqah Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq is involved in an incident, it had to do with a great opening for the tariqah. That this struggle of Sayyidina Bilal al-Habashi and this realities of akhfa reality that is under the station of Muhammadun Rasulullah, anyone studied the lataif, all the Prophets on different lataifs. But Prophet is in the center of the heart in the akhfa reality representing annihilation. And his holy companion who reached that state and is a draw and a blessing and, and a gift into that state of ahadiyya is then brought and involving Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq and Sayyidina Bilal al Habashi to dress Naqshbandiyya <coughs> with the immensity of, of this secret and the immensity of this gift and the reality of uh, the akhfa realities of annihilation and reaching towards the presence and the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa How do we refrain from getting overwhelmed by the corruption and atrocity playing out, especially when we see good people, vulnerable people, and innocent children having their lives oppressed and destroyed? How do we get over what? How do we refrain from getting overwhelmed? by all the corruption and atrocity playing out, especially when we see good people, vulnerable people and innocent children having their lives oppressed and destroyed. <clears throat> There's uh, no, no way to to become immune to the suffering of mankind and the suffering that happening upon this earth other than spiritual practices and spiritual connections in which Allah to compensate from the oceans of light and qudra and understanding. So we describe that in these last days the spiritual people whom are coming onto this earth and the spiritual guidance that is coming upon this earth is such a immense powerful reality many people will not reach with their physicality. If we understand that then we understand that then many states of death will begin to enter onto this earth. Why? One, the more positive one is that they're going to be following these guidance but without their body. So when these states of death and destruction and all these difficulties are coming, those whom achieved their martyrdom, who achieved through their difficulty and their passing from this earth, their lights are luminous lights but their journey didn't end, it now just merely began. As a result they lend themselves to be of service to the arrival of these very 
holy souls and very holy events that will be opening upon the earth. The pinnacle of their entire reason for coming into existence and their test upon this earth is to see these events, to be with these holy souls, to be with Sayyidina Mahdi to be with Sayyidina Isa to have completed the perfection of faith in our existence in humanity was to be with them <coughs> the final chapter. If people didn't make it with their physicality Allah's rahmah and mercy is that I will bring it with their spirituality and with their souls. So when these difficult events begin to take place on earth it's not wasted. It's sad for the people on earth but the one whom passed their light is in full bloom, full lights and they lend themselves to be of service to that reality. So it has an immense reality within it. And there's many other realities within things that, that Allah's rahmah and mercy that when somebody is going to be tortured or harmed and they're innocent Allah will take the soul of that person before they experience something and throw the soul of a shaitan in there to be tortured. So there's many different things that not understood by, by people but there are events that are happening upon this earth and that Allah is, is, is immensely merciful. That these are the events of people and their free will and bad character. But as a result of their bad character Allah they plan and Allah plans better. Means that they have immense grace, immense blessings, immense openings for these souls that these difficulties are happening upon. So there's an immense reward. And our journey is not for here but it's for the hereafter and everyone's journey is to achieve the light in the hereafter. So then these souls are achieving immense lights, immense realities. So inshaAllah Allah make everything to be easy and filled with His Divinely grace inshaAllah. <laughs> As Salaamu Alaikum Shaykh As Salaamu Alaikum Shaykh I'm new to Islam. Is Isa salam considered the Messiah? New to Islam, inshaAllah, Sayyidina Isa ibn Maryam, Jesus Christ, son of Mary, he is a Messiah. Coming in the last days. But those are also technical issues based on everybody's point of reference. He's coming as a second coming, coming for us because we accepted His first coming. Because there are a group of people of faith that say, no He never came and they wanted to kill Him then. So Islamic belief is that of course He came and is the Messiah and that He came to say that after me is a Prophet coming, Wasmahu Ahmad because He named the name of Prophet in the heavens and that He would come and then Allah described in Qur'an that we raised Him so that nobody touched Sayyidina Isa and that the face of Judas was transformed to look like Sayyidina Isa and they began to torture Judas as a result of his betrayal for his Prophet. And that's why when the Sayyidina Isa came to the companions and said that, you will deny me three times in biblical teaching but the Islamic understanding is that they they paraded Judas who now looked like Sayyidina Isa and they took him to the companions of Sayyidina Isa saying, do you know this man? And they said, no we don't know him. And then people say, oh that was an amazing betrayal because they were his companions, how in this state of fear they denied their Prophet. But the hikmah and wisdom is, yeah they really didn't know him because they had firasa and they knew that Allah raised their Prophet. And the man that they're seeing, they don't know who that is, means it's not Sayyidina Isa So there's an immense amount of Islamic hikmah in, in the biblical understanding 
of what transpired. But Sayyidina Isa is, is the Messiah that was prophesied and that Sayyidina Mahdi is coming as a saviour to humanity and that when they begin the battles against the Antichrist Sayyidina Isa will appear and then both holy personalities will be upon the earth unifying humanity. So many, many, many immense realities with Sayyidina Isa salam and our teachings and that he's very close to the reality of Prophet the Jesus Christ peace and blessings be upon him salam that he has a burial spot in Medina right next to the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad and that from the understanding of the world of light that there's no time. So means that his holy soul must be there in Medina next to Prophet at all times. So anyone visiting Medina to Munawwara is visiting the holy presence of Sayyidina Isa ibn Maryam And that Maryam has a very, very close reality to the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad because she's Surah 19. 19 has to do with the Ahlul Bayt that the 19 letters of Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem is the secret of Ali, Fatima, Hassan, Hussein and Muhammad. These are 19 letters that are the realities of Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. So Allah puts Surah Al Mahriyam as Surah 19 to draw our attention that she is very close to the reality of Prophet and that Allah describes in Surah Al Maryam, we have chose you above all women in creation. So alhamdulillah, inshaAllah. <coughs> As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam I would like to humbly ask you, is there one jinn king or do the jinn have many kings? Yeah, the jinns have many sultans but the one overruling their authority of the ones whom believe is Sayyidina Hazaz And Sayyidina Hazaz has an over, overwhelming rule and authority over all jinn, jinn sultans. His authority is over all of them Why does someone want to know that? <laughs> As Salaamu Alaikum Shaykh <laughs> As Salaamu uh, Can we shut the inner demons completely? Can you shed the inner demon completely? No one can, can, <clears throat> can, can kill their nafs, no one can kill their nafs. But you can convert your nafs, that's the importance is that with your practices and the madad and support that you make the nafs to begin to submit. As the nafs is submitting and the energy and practices the nafs becomes more like a buraq for the servant in which it's converted and not becoming partners with shaitan and then that nafs begins to work for the servant like a buraq in which to uplift the servant towards the Divine the Presence but requires all of their practices in Allah's madad and support that He begin to open these energies, these realities upon the nafs in which the nafs is not nafs amara continuously working with shaitan becomes now nafs al-lawama and then nafs al mutmainna all the different degrees of the submission of this, the nafs and when the nafs is subdued then the real lights of the soul can begin to dress the soul because now the body is submitting and the body is doing the good deeds and good efforts so that the soul can be nourished and flourish like a camel that has no access to water. The soul is like a camel, naqatullah like the camel of Allah 
if it doesn't have access to water it is running like it's being tortured. As soon as the nafs goes out of the way the servant is free to worship and do good deeds, good characteristics. As a result the camel then is flourishing, the soul is flourishing with lights and energies and beatific dresses of Allah As a result then you become nafs al-mutma'inna and then nafs al-radiya, all the different degrees in which Allah turns onto that soul and nafs is that is pleased with that soul and the soul is pleased with Allah and Allah dressing and blessing that soul with immense realities. But that is the original struggle from the beginning on how to open that reality and to be dressed from that reality, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum respected Sayyidi Wa Alaikum As Salaam wa rahmatullah What is the proper sunnah method of eating, floor or table and does practicing on sunnah method of eating increase our energy? There's lowering the table and eating sunnah, anything sunnah alhamdulillah is immense blessing. And anytime somebody has the ability to eat on the floor, alhamdulillah is an immense barakah. So but doesn't mean that we all can do that and adjust the home furnishing. So we want to say one thing but we're all doing something different. But it has its reality and immense haqqaiqs. So those whom are able to eat on the floor, of course then they're being dressed by the immense blessings of it. And as a result of eating on the floor then we adhere to what Prophet described, one third air, one third water, one third food. So as soon as you sit in a seated position your belly is now restricted and as a result of having adequate amount of liquid and food as you're eating your belly is restricted. But on traditional tables where you're, you're fully extended and the whole stomach is being exposed, the whole stomach now wants to be full. So of course then they're going to eat a lot more and they're going to drink a lot more and there's not going to be any air. So that was the secret and the reality of the sunnah of Prophet That as soon as they sat on the floor Allah dressed them for their humility. As soon as they sat on the floor also their actual physiology is cramped everything so that less food would be intake. And so by the time the person stood up they are not completely full and they didn't eat to be completely full. So that was an immense blessing. As well as eating with the hand there's an immense energy. Those whom studied from our talks on wudu the hands are coated. And as soon as we wash and make wudu the hands have an immense energy field and forks and knives don't have that. So when they eat with their hand they're putting an immense energy into that food and taking that ta'am and taking that blessing and bringing that blessing into their, their being. So there was a great conveyance of energy and blessing of everything so that had a, again immense realities. So the, the fact that uh, anything from Prophet must have an immense energy secret in it because the master of all energy, master of all realities. So imagine then the amount of energies and secrets that are upon the hand and then when they're eating from the hand then that blessing is coming into their being and healing them and shifa for them. But metal and different types of metals and, and those may not have that same property, they don't have that same property. So then humanity has a whole different existence now. The tables are high, the utensils may be made from metals that are not pure, not good, uh, plastics that have all sorts of contaminants and, and different chemicals. So it's a, it's a system destroyed as a result by dajjal to destroy everything. But if we look back to the tradition then it had an immense blessing and, and secret within it inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzat amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Illu shirif al nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa alayhi wa sallam kiram wa alam shaykhina fi tariqatun ashbandiyat al aliyya wa sa'ilu sadatina wa siddiqeen al fatiha.